now we have uh, a list of items and we can delete items but now we need to be able to actually add items to do that we're going to use something really cool here which is on the scaffold we have an option to give it a floating action button we could use any widget but flutter provides us with a floating action button widget and this floating action button takes in an unpressed property and if we save right now we actually can see something here but it's just a little ball it has actually no shadow it doesn't have any visual references it doesn't do anything but we're going to change that so first of all we're going to give it a child and it's going to be an icon and in this case it's going to be an add icon Ready looks a bit more inspiring if you notice it has no shadow uh, because it has no method no callback method so we're going to give one a method we're going to create here is going to be called go to new item view we don't have this method yet but we're going to declare it down here and I'm going to choose to put it down here because I prefer to separate the navigation and the uh, data changing methods uh, and I keep keep them in this order essentially I keep all the data changing methods down here and navigation methods here and then all the widgets we're creating with methods up here so let's do that here we're going to use our navigator and what is our navigator so navigator is a class that's inherited by our material app and we are able to use it to navigate through our application so what we're going to do is to push a new router to it now we could write our own route that would mean choosing or writing our own animations and a few other things but we don't need to do all that ourselves since flutter offers us a material page job and we're going to use it so I'm just gonna break this down a little bit here and uh, as we've done before this expects to pass us a context and it needs to return something so what we're going to return is a new item view now this new item view doesn't exist yet and that's exactly what we're going to do now we're going to create a new file we're going to call it new item view dot dart and we're starting a new view from scratch and we're going to import material and once again we're going to do a stateful widget and it's called new item view now this is going to be our new view as we've done before it needs a scaffold and it needs an app bar I say need but reality is it's the best user experience and we're going to call it new we're going to give it a body as this body is going to have something different from our previous view since this body is going to be a sort of a form we're going to need a text field we're going to need a button uh, we're going to need space for the keyboard so what we're going to do here is actually use a column instead of a list view because a list view allows us to scroll now on Android we can see when the list is to is already reached this end or at the top or at the bottom it shows us the little animation now if we're using a column that doesn't happen it's fully static and that's what we're gonna, going to make use of a column as our original list view takes children as a list of widgets and we're going to put in a text field here and we're going to put a button now if we render just this it's going to look quite ugly I'm sure we have a problem why do we have a problem because we although we've created a new file we actually haven't imported it and I'm going to use the helper here to import a file but all this is doing is importing up here with the name of our application new item view dot dart which is our item up here and if I save everything should be fine and if we now we can see that we have our shadow and if we click we go into our new view now a couple of things are happening here our button isn't showing but we have a text field well, let's give our button something to show in this case it's going to be save ah, save and does it do anything? no because 
it's null here. All right. Let's do and give it. Let's go ahead and give it a method. Put this method down here, and let's say when it's pressed, it prints save. Okay, it turns a darker color because it's now active. Now this color doesn't seem very fitting with the rest of our application. What we're gonna do is to make this look a little bit nicer. We're going to access the style of our text. And this takes in a widget called text style, and it will take a color. To give this the same color as our application, we're going to access the theme of our context, like we did with the navigator, and we're going to access the accent color. So what this does is now we have an orange button, just like our th main theme, which takes in the text editing controller, and we're going to call it a text field controller. And we're going to declare it up here. So text editing controller called text field, and it's a text editing controller, and it's declared. Now what what happens here? What happens is that we can now access our controller, and it has a property called text. So now we can come here. We f I forgot the parenthesis. We save it, and once we save, oh, there we go. And it's printing out everything we write in our text field. Now we want to be able to do this once we press here, but it would be nice if when the user clicks his keyboard that it does the same effect. So to that, what we're going to do is say when on editing complete, which tr is triggered by the enter or the return key on the keyboard we would expect to do the same as our button. So we're just going to do exactly that. We're gonna come here, save, and now we're gonna check. We've got our keyboard, we've got something written down. We're gonna press this key and there you go.